Well, my earliest memories of the fair was being taken down to the ground on the Sunday when the showmen arrived for putting everything up, all the lorries arriving. My mother used to take us down. And I think back in those days, a lot of people used to go down just to see what was there on a Sunday. Uh, years ago, my mother used to do washing for the showmen. This was before the, the days of laundrettes and, and that sort of thing. So the showmen would arrive in the town and they would advertise for people to take their washing, do it, wash it, iron it, take it back to them and they would pay them. Of course, that was a bit of extra money for people to give the kids to go to the fair. Plus a few free ride tickets, I expect, was thrown in. And, uh, yeah, we always used to go down on the Sunday. We'd always have the day off from school on the Wednesday. We used to go down on the bus from Fortress, where I live. And my earliest memories is behind the Queen Anne's Walk Heritage Centre. There used to be two maroon living wagons parked, belonging to Anderton Brothers. And that's one of my early memories of the, seeing those two big living wagons all beautifully done in red and all uh, varnished and polished up and we would walk down into Castle Street and into the fairground and the atmosphere was always really good. I mean, as, a, as a young kid under five, six year old, I mean the rides we would go on then is the Anderton Brothers Toy Town ride the buses and the fire engines, which is a very popular attraction. Uh, Anderton Rowling's Buzz Bomb ride and little toy rides. We'd uh, go on the stalls. There'd be the uh, the clowns heads where you used to put a ping pong in the mouth and you have to work out so many numbers. And if you got a certain amount of numbers, you would win a prize. Or pick a court was another one. Um, some of the shows that used to come to Barnstable, I can remember. Just going to the mirror show, where it was all distorted mirrors and that, you'd be fat in one, tall in another, skinny. Uh, another show I can remember seeing when I was about 11 or 12 was The Girl in the Goldfish Bowl. Uh, and then that was done by a, a gentleman called uh, Vic Jeffries, who was quite a renowned re illusionist. And he used to travel all over the country, but Barnstable Fair, one year, I think it was 1962 or 63, he presented the girl in the goldfish bowl. And you paid your sixpence and walked in. It's only a little small booth. And uh, on the table at the back of the stall was a goldfish bowl. Wire netting in front of it so you couldn't touch it or nothing. And there would be a girl in a bathing costume in the bowl, or would appear to be in the bowl. And you could talk to her and ask her questions and she'd shake her head or nod her head and she'd do an head stand or a hand stand. Of course we used to ask her to do a cartwheel which she couldn't do. Shake of the head, no. But it was a very good illusion show. Boxing and wrestling booths of uh, McCoy, there was always two at Barnstable Fair, uh, Mickey Kiley's and uh, the McCohen family. And the McCohen family had been associated with Barnstable Fair for since the 1880s, 1890s. Esther McCohen, she was the owner of the booth with her husband, Sam. She was 102 when she died, back in 1999. But she had the booth right up until the 1990s. And uh, it was very popular at Barnstable. They used to winter at Barnstable during the 1930s. And they would promote boxing matches in the pannier market during the winter months to bring in an extra bit of money and then go off around Easter time off and do all the fairs. But she was quite a character, old Esther McCullen. And her, she got one son still alive today. And uh, though they've given up the booth now, I mean, you can't take no money with the booth now because nobody wants to go on there to fight. Yeah, how it worked, the boxing booth proprietor would be up on the front with his troop of boxers and wrestlers and he'd challenge anybody from the crowd to come up and uh, take on one of his men and uh, if they went for the three rounds they'd get paid pound a round or, but if they got knocked out or stopped they wouldn't get nothing and at the end of each fight they would pass the out around the audience as what they called nobbins 
and everybody will chuck in two or three pence or two shilling piece, shilling. And, that, and then they'll go in that. The two boxers, two fighters would share that bit of money out. And yeah, they could do four or five shows a night. In fact, when the fair was on North Wall, Bernard McCohen, that's Esther's son, used to say they used to be open by half past nine, ten o'clock on the Friday morning of fair week. And they'd go right through till midnight. He said it would be non-stop. Well, each show you went in to see, you would see either two or three bouts, maybe two of boxing, one of wrestling, or two of wrestling, one of boxing. And it'd last about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And for that, you'd pay two shillings, half a crown, something like that. Uh, well, one show I did remember going to see was uh, Professor Testo's Flea Circus. Back, that was in the early 60s when he came here with it. And he was uh, the father-in-law of uh, Vic Jeffries. And uh, again, the flea circus was very popular back in those days. And you would go into the marquee and there was a glass cabinet on the table. And the fleas were in there and they would do all little circus acts. Do a tight, they had a tight rope where they walk across a tight rope. Uh, pull a chariot. And all sorts of different little things. You could look through the ca uh, the glass uh, case and watch them doing it. Yeah. I think there's still one in existence which uh, travels around just doing special exhibitions. Yeah, well, I carried on going to the fairs right through my teenage years. Going down as soon as the uh, the load started arriving on the Sunday, I'd be down there, and uh, I gradually got to know one or two showmen. I used to help out on Ophie Whitelegs Gallopers in the late 60s, early 70s, building them up, pulling them down. Uh, another fella I worked for, I done a, was a showman called Harry Cocker. And he had some, he just had stalls. And he stopped me one morning, it was the day after the fair had finished on the Saturday. And I was down on the fair going there, just mooching around. I was about 13 at the time asked me if I wanted a job. I said, yeah, can you help me? Yes, all right. So I helped him for about half an hour, putting all these stalls in the back of his bus. And he said, right, I'm going up to the pannier market now, to set the stalls up again, ready for the carnival. Can you come up and give me a hand? So I went up to the pannier market, helped him up there. And then from there on, over the years, I helped quite a few showmen. And I sort of got my interest. And uh, the Showman's Weekly newspaper, the World's Fair, I started reading that when I was a, a newspaper boy up at Acklands, uh, the news agents. And there was a paper, this paper there every week called the World's Fair, so I used to have a look at it. And I started buying it, and then in the late 1970s, I started writing articles and sending them into the paper. And then from about 1980 onwards, I became the correspondent for the whole of Devon. Well, I'd like to see Barnesville Fair carry on. Um, I think we're going to have to have a move in the next two or three years, by the looks of it. Where the fair is going to go, I don't know. But I think the council's got to take into consideration what the showmen want to do. Because a lot of these showmen families have been tied to Barnesville Fair for the last hundred years or more. And the families have just carried on, carried on, going from one generation to the other. And I think it's important that the council takes their views into a, a effect. And hopefully, you know, it'll carry on forever. I think it's one of the best things, the most important events of the year for Barnstable. I mean, I do the billing. I put the posters up for the Showman's Guild. And I, tra I travel out as far as credit in some years and people tell me they do come in for the fair all the villages I go to Chumley, Coo Martin, Woolacombe, Bronton, Torrington the amount of people say oh yeah we come in always come in for Barnstable Fair so it, I think it proves that the fair is still important to a lot of North Devonians <laughs>